So today's session is about the Master of Public Health. Uh, we have an expert from the university to speak to us and also a special industry guest. So uh, I'm going to hand over to those guys to conduct the main session and I'll be back at the end to help answer any of your questions. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca Tour. I'm the Program Coordinator for the Master of Public Health and also the Graduate Diploma and Graduate Certificate of Public Health. Um, I'd like to welcome you and thank you for joining us tonight and I'm going to talk through now um, some of the um, descriptions of the degree and um, the entry requirements for um, getting into it. So it's a two-year full-time degree. Um, it requires a completed undergraduate degree. We have online and on-campus delivery and we have three specialisations. There are two, also two pathways for the degree. So we have our normal two year full time degree, the conversion pathway, and that's for students that don't have undergraduate public health training. But if you have um, done an undergraduate degree with a public health major, or you've done a public health degree, or you've done medicine or dentistry, um, you may be eligible for our extension pathway. So that's a one and a half year degree. Um, that allows you to complete the degree a little bit quicker, recognising that you already have some public health um, experience from your undergrad program. If you have done honours in public health, you may be eligible for our one year extension pathway. So the three specialisations in the Master of Public Health are the public health specialisation. And this um, is designed for um, students that are looking for careers in public health or where you need the skills and experience uh, that a Master of Public Health can provide. But we also have a specialisation in translational health sciences. So what this is looking at is knowledge translation, um, the translational research trajectory, and you'll learn how to use strategies that help you to close the research to practice gaps. So this is a particularly um, relevant for people that have a clinical background, but it's also useful for public health and it's really learning to use the evidence that's out there um, and then work out how to implement strategies that will get that, that evidence into practice so that we have better evidence-based healthcare. And new in 2017 is our population oral health specialisation. So this is particularly of interest to people that have a dentistry or oral health background and um, allows for you to develop careers in public health dentistry or to broaden the um, population oral health orientation of your current work. So if we look at the public health specialisation first, you can see here that we cover a range of core courses. So all the sort of things you'd expect to see in a public health degree, epidemiology and biostatistics, environmental and occupational health, global public health, evaluation, health promotion, and leadership and advocacy. And then depending on how much research you choose to do as part of the program, you'll also have the opportunity to choose four electives. This looks a little bit complicated, this diagram, but it shows you how this degree is structured. So you can see over on the left-hand side of the diagram in the blue, the two-year conversion program, and then the two shorter programs for people with public health background um, the one and a half year program in grey and the one year program in brown. So you can see that um, the core courses are shared across the three pathways, but depending on what background in public health you have, you probably find that we don't require you to take every one of the core courses. Then every student will do a capstone, and that's shown there in the diagram in the middle, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. And then there's electives. So depending on um, um, which research capacity you undertake, then you can see the electives there. When we look at the translational health sciences specialisation, the, the core courses are a little bit different there. There's some that are common to public health, uh, but there's also some specialised courses in translational health sciences. So again, learning how to pull evidence together and synthesise it so that you can make recommendations for practice. Um, and in addition to that, um, you can take some specialised electives that uh, have been created just for the specialisation. So the Translational Health Science specialisation is also unique in being completely online if you want it to be. So um, all of these courses are available in online mode. 
Um, the population oral health specialisation has two focuses, either a practice or research focus. Um, similar to translational health sciences, you're going to do some master of public health, public health type of courses, so epidemiology, epidemiology and biostatistics, um, but also some specialised population oral health courses. And you can choose between some of the MPH and some of the POH courses, as well as taking electives. And there you can see how the structure of the specialisation works. So um, introduction to epi and biostats are common to all of our specialisations. And then depending on um, which one you choose, some of the other MPH public health courses or specialisation courses. And you can see here the capstone for these specialisations is a specialisation of its own. Uh, and again, I'll talk through those in a moment. And then depending on which pathway you follow, you'll have a number of electives to fill out the required units. So the specialisations in translational um, health and in population oral health are only available in the two year um, full conversion program. So the capstones, so this is the thing that um, comes at the end of your program that helps you to bring together all of your learning. So for public health, that's a three unit practicum. So a, um, a single course within a semester where you are placed in a workplace and undertake work integrated learning together with a small research project and a linked research methods course. Or you can choose to do a full semester of research or even a full year of research. So it depends on um, how much uh, a focus on research you want to do. In the translation of health sciences specialisation, the capstone is a semester long translation project undertaken in a workplace where you identify a practice, um, evidence to practice gap, um, pull together all the evidence for that, develop an implementation project or strategy and actually implement it in the workplace and see um, how that works. In population oral health, you can choose between the research focus, which is a full year thesis, or the practice focus, where you'll undertake a practicum as well as a semester long dissertation. So there's plenty of different options, but all of them give you um, a good grounding in some research skills and um, practice, together with as much practice in the workplace as you want to undertake. So the eligibility requirement is a completed bachelor's degree, um, a grade point average of five out of seven, so that's normally a credit average. If you're an international student, you also need to meet the IELTS, so the English language criteria, which is 6.5. Um, we also have a nested program, so the graduate certificate and graduate diploma in public health don't have the GPA cut off. So if you don't quite meet the requirement, it can be possible to come into the program via the graduate certificate or graduate diploma. And if you um, perform well, and we can see that you're getting credit averages in your courses, then we can um, transfer you into the Master of Public Health at the end of the graduate certificate or graduate diploma. So we call the program nested. So the graduate certificate nested into the graduate diploma, which is nested into the masters. And what this means is that at the completion of a graduate certificate, those courses and credit automatically transfer into the diploma. And similarly, those courses then transfer into the masters. So you um, add one on to the other. So in total, the masters would still only be 24 units. Um, the graduate diploma is one year of full-time study. It includes um, the two compulsory courses in um, biostatistics and epidemiology because these are the basic building blocks of public health. And then you choose other courses from among the MPH core courses and you have four electives. The graduate certificate is uh, a six month or one semester full-time program. Um, and you can choose any two core public health courses and any two electives. And you can also undertake um, cross-institutional study if you want to, um, picking a course that's available at another university. So these programs can be taken part-time or full-time, but um, here just shows you how long it would take if you were to study in full-time pattern. Um, this graduate certificate is possible to undertake it completely online by choosing the online courses that we have available, which is the majority of our core courses in public health and translational health sciences and some of our electives. 
We also have a policy for recognising um, and granting academic credit, so from any prior learning. Um, and that's, um, we use that policy then to um, work out what credit you'd be eligible for on a case-by-case -case basis. So when you're looking into the program, if you want to um, investigate whether you'd be eligible for any credit, and you can certainly contact me and I can have a look at your circumstances and give you some advice about whether that would be possible. So we have a strong emphasis in the Master of Public Health on career readiness. So as I mentioned before, um, we have a practicum now that's um, required for all students who don't choose to do a dissertation or thesis. Um, in addition, we have a mentoring program that will be um, commencing next year where we'll be linking students with alumni of the Master of Public Health. The program has been going for over 27 years. So we have a lot of very experienced public health practitioners um, working across Australia and across the world who are really keen to support students to develop their um, public health skills and um, advise them about their career trajectory. As well as that, um, every student is offered customised study planning so we can help you to choose the uh, courses and electives um, that are going to best match your career aspirations. So thinking about careers in public health, they are many and varied. And not all of them will have the words public or health in the job title. So um, our advice to any students thinking about public health is that you need to be really creative when thinking about um, career opportunities because the skill set is very relevant across a lot of different areas. So there are options in government agencies and increasingly that's including non-health portfolios. So um, government departments like uh, communities and families, education, um, planning and the environment are all areas that are now employing people with public health qualifications. And more, more and more local government is also um, needing public health qualified people to undertake um, the work that they do. Particularly if you're in South Australia, um, the South Australian Public Health Act requires local government to deliver on public health outcomes and have public health plans and so public health trained um, staff are being increasingly needed in that area. Um, you can also find yourself potentially working in non-government agencies that are in the health and social care space, so for example the Cancer Council or the Heart Foundation, um, and within industry and including increasingly um, in the aged and residential care sector. And a lot of people with public health training do go on to work in research. Um, either in research institutes or in with, within academia. And as you can see here, the roles that people undertake can really span the wide range of skills from practice, policy, research, advocacy, um, right through to program development, delivery and evaluation. So um, really big picture right through to working one-on-one -on -one with people and all of it we would call public health. When we have a look at who's graduated from the Master of Public Health at Adelaide Uni over the last 27 years, um, we have, as I mentioned previously, we have academics, we have public health practitioners and leaders in health-related government and non-government agencies. Um, we've certainly seen a number of clinicians come through the program, so people with medical, dentistry, nursing qualifications finding their way into leadership roles in the health services. Um, people working in private industry, um, in healthcare and in consultancies, and really a number of graduates who've gone on to take major leadership roles in non-health related um, jobs. So company CEOs, in crime and statistics, um, environmental protection. So it really is one of those degrees that provides you with a wide range of career enhancing skills. And people really often use that to build on um, the skills and experience that they already have. So now what I'd like to do is introduce our industry guest. So I have with me Martina Gobel, and she's a project manager at Southern Cross Care, which is one of South Australia's major aged care providers. Welcome, Hello. Martina. Hello. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, it's so much uh, great of you to come along and talk to us tonight. Very, very happy to do it. And the program is um, one that I actually work closely with uh, through my organisation, so I'm more than supportive of it. Um, it's wonderful to be here. Um, I am a project manager for um, Southern Cross Care, which is our 
a non-for-profit aged care provider in uh, the South Australian and Northern Territory. Um, we we service um, uh, three different, uh, three major areas. We do our retirement living, um, residential living, and the community space. Uh, so we have a wide, wide variety of services that we uh, offer. Um, I guess um, my role is is quite um, varied. I do quite a lot within the organisation. I, I sit within the quality team, so I work with quality improvement. Um, but I also manage student placements because part of my uh, duties is uh, are to um, uh, in, engage students within our organisation and progress um, quality projects. And we do that through having students in the um, practical. Yes. So um, there's a lot um, that I do. Yep. And I think you really hit the nail on the head when you said that um, don't look for jobs that say public health in them because part of the fun of this core of, of being a, a master of, in public health is being creative with the types of roles that you find. Yep. Um, I, I guess my background, yeah. if, if um, we've got the time, yeah, um, absolutely. Go <laughs> my background is um, I'm a microbiologist, I finished my uh, medical science and I worked in a laboratory setting for six years and I realised that while I love bacteria, they don't talk back to me and I don't get that. <laughs> That human interaction that I really was um, longing for. So I went back and I studied and uh, once I graduated I um, did a, a bit of a, a placement type um, situation where I went overseas and I worked within um, the Secretariat of the Pacific Community so mm -hmm. that was fantastic. I did a lot of um, uh, little biostatistics there so that was <laughs> very heavy. Um, and I worked out that I didn't want to be a biased, <laughs> but I did work out that I, I did want to work within the health industry and I did want to um, support people. And while I'd done some work in the aged care industry before, I'd done some volunteering, um, I'd done some pay work as well. Um, it was definitely an avenue that I could see was growing. So that's what made me yeah. apply for a job as a wellness and lifestyle manager yep. within um, one of uh, Southern Cross Care's organisations, uh, sites, pardon me. Um, and when I was there, I was you know, implementing all those skills that I learned. So, um, you know, evaluations, um, um, assessments, um, implementing new policy, um, changing procedures, uh, rolling out health promotion. It was, it was such a, a varied role again. Um, and when you'd see it written down on a piece of paper, you'd think, oh, maybe that's not something I can apply for. But it's, it just fits, it checks all the boxes, it really does. Uh, and it's from then that I moved on. Um, I got recognised for the work I'd done. I got uh, promoted into the yeah. um, quality team, and that's that's where I'm sitting at the yeah. moment. And um, I'm I'm really rolling out lots of different new exciting programs that are promoting active ageing and promoting healthy ageing, uh, working with uh, our residents to find out what what is important to them and, and how we can that how we can. Um, connect them with different services, how we can connect them with um, living a stronger and, and more independent life. Yeah. Uh, so there's, and that includes rolling out um, different projects, but it also is very much related to changing policy and changing procedures to, to um, really uh, complement what is what the research is currently telling us. So yeah. there's a bit there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, as I mentioned before, in a, it's a new area, it would seem, aged care for employment for public health. Why do you think things are changing in the sector in that way? I, I think definitely um, there's been such a huge focus now on improving quality of life. And aged care made this huge shift, which is fantastic. And it's happening in Australia. It's still, still following in, in other parts of the world. But I think... What we, what we are now seeing is that the research is showing that we can actually prevent frailty. We, we can stop um, the, people's decline um, through simple things like exercise and diet. We can li limit the amount of um, people that develop dementia. So all these things then need to be um, passed down through the chain. Uh, and that's why you know, public health is so important and health promotion is so important yeah. in these, in these um, services. Um, aged care is now, um, if you do move into aged care, it's, it's just that next step of life. And, and you can see it through, you see it throughout the media now that, you know, we, all of our sites have, have gyms in them. And so you, it, 
you wouldn't have thought that yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, we have 104 year olds going to the gym more times than I go to the gym, <laughs> which, you know, if three times a week yeah. there's someone who's 104 is going to the gym, so what's your excuse? Um, but that's how, that's how yeah. I always motivate myself. Um, there, there's, the space is really changing and I think there's been, obviously the um, ageing population, we've got a lot of work to do mm. to make sure that as we, um, as, we, as we grow older and as we live longer, our lives are better. Yep. And I, I always say that I've got a bit of a vested interest in it because the more work I do now, the better it'll be for me if I am in aged care in the future. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. <laughs> So obviously, you know, when something's changing like that and you're sitting in a position where you're trying to drive some of that change, mm -hmm. um, were there skills from your public health training that you've been able to bring to bear, particularly around sort of driving the change, like the sort of advocacy skills? Definitely. I refer to the Ottawa Charter most, um, most days um, of my role. Um, I really, it, it's, it really is based around those principles of creating a healthy environment and um, ad advocating for yeah. people. At the end of the day, we're advocating for our residents to, to give them the best quality of life possible. Yeah. Um, evaluation is always something that's really important um, within the course that's, you know, hammered in <laughs> from day one. <laughs> Epidemiology, you're dealing with people with um, a large amount of uh, chronic conditions yeah. so you really need to take those things into account um, statistics you're collecting data all the time um, to be able to to contribute to evaluation mm -hmm. but also to change policy and procedure if um, the things that we're finding we, we're actually using them now to to shape our way forward to to use it as justification for um, the services that we're, we're trying to offer and trying to provide so yeah, lots, lots that I've learned, um, and, and management as well. That's that's something that's really covered in a lot of a lot yeah. of the courses. Yeah, um, and it's such an important important driver for to make the work carry along. Yeah, okay. That's, yeah. That sounds um, like a really good match. Surprisingly, yeah. between a, a sector that didn't really know it needed us. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. And I, I, when I was in that wellness and lifestyle role, I um, I was promoting. Um, you know, people to, to get in, like, health science students, public health students, to get involved in, in that area because it's such a growing area and it's an area that previously hasn't had as much expertise and it's great now that we're getting these um, students that are really developing their skills and really moving the, moving the system along. Yeah. So, um, I, yeah, I would definitely encourage um, people to, to look into those yeah. alleys where they're not quite sure yeah. um, that there is a, an opportunity for public health because... More often than not, I think there will be. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's a great example of how you can kind of think about the skill set and then match it to lots of different areas. So Age Care is just one of those examples. Definitely. But those same skills can be used across the and board. I've always had a passion for education, so I, I try to incorporate that into my um, into my role. And I work with a lot of students to pop them into placements to, to roll out these activities mm -hmm. um, and, and programs. And... That's why I get to, you know, be almost an educator. I get to be an advocate. I get to be um, a project manager. I yeah. get to be, you know, a, a friend to a resident. There's so many things that I get to do and that the Masters of Public Health open that up to me. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. So have you got any advice for prospective students who are thinking about a Master of Public Health? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely do it. Um, I'm a perpetual student. I was definitely, I had a lot of different um options of what I was going to do um, to progress myself and the, the Master of Public Health just made sense. Yeah. Um, it's a degree that you can actually do mostly online if, if you are working as a professional already. Um, it develops, it builds on skills you probably already have. Because I was, um, I was already in a medical type industry, but I still needed to work up some of those um, public health contact hours. Yep. So that actually was quite rewarding for me because I did a bit of volunteering. Mm -hmm. I did a little bit of um, extra advocacy work, which, again, really highlighted where I wanted to go and that aged care was something that yeah. I was very interested in. Yep. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I couldn't, I, I would definitely, if I had the option of looking at different courses and and. and potentially doing something different, I would still do a Masters of Public Health. I think it's been so valuable and yeah. so beneficial for progressing forward. Mm. I'm, yeah, very, very supportive of it. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that probably is all we um, have to say tonight. Okay. Well, we probably haven't heard some questions. So we've got some from yeah. the um, participants. Yeah, sure. 
couple more questions from in here. Um, what advice would you give to someone starting their first job in this field? So, oh, ah, okay. Um, I think be open to, to possibilities and be open to um, re-advocating your role. I think a lot of employers are still, you know, they, they're not quite sure. They, they, they see Masters of Public Health and they think, great. But then they, they're not sure how to unpack that. So I think really advocate for how you can promote that, promote their um, yeah. business, promote their services, um, in, improve their policies and procedures, um, and, and make better, um, make the company better. <laughs> um, this is, this is a, uh, I really think be an advocate for, for yourself, for yeah. the role, um, and also, just um, use this. You, you've got so many skills. Use everything you have. Um, as, do as much. I think every every industry needs health promotion. Be it, you know, if you, even if you're working in an office, the health promotion there is let's create a healthy environment for your team. Even if you're working, um, you know, on a um, water treatment site, you know, there's there's things that your employees can do to get out outdoors. Um, if you're working in aged care, there's things you can do for your customers. Um, that health promotion side of things is is probably the most um, the most useful part of my role. Yeah, definitely. That's great. Yeah. Just while we're waiting for any more questions to come in, a question from me, Martina. We keep hearing a lot about this changing demographic in Australia. We're going to yeah. have a lot more older people. Yeah. Do you agree that the jobs in your sector are just going to keep growing and it's just going to be... I, I, as when I, um, I manage a lot of student placements within our organisation, and I have students from allied health, uh, fitness backgrounds, uh, social work, psychology, and these are people that have not considered a career in aged care, and they've almost been you know, allocated to an aged care placement. And you see the size in the room when they come in for an <laughs> induction. But I, I challenge them at the very start to to show me the um, if they haven't learnt uh, a lot from this experience, and if they haven't seen the value of of um, their particular um, role within the organization. We have a lot of um, you know, exercise um, students too, and they um, and they are the kind that they want a lot of the time go into the career to be working with elite sports people. But unfortunately, there, there aren't that many elite sports people <laughs> in, in Australia. But guess what? There's a lot of people over 60. <laughs> so I always try and, and show people what they can do and the, the amount of... Um, uh, variation within the aged care industry as well. You're getting more and more people that are active and and um, and socially engaged, and they need that extra stimulation. They need that extra support, and and that's why it's a, it's a growing field. Yeah. I would advocate for everyone get into yeah. aged care. There's always there's going to be a role for you in aged care. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So a growing sector, and a sector yeah, that's getting really. more interesting all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you have any more questions coming through there? No? Okay. Well, uh, from me, thank you very much for uh, tuning into this webinar. It will be uh, recorded and online if you want to watch it again. Um, and I'll leave my guests to say thank you as well. Yeah, so thank you very much for joining us. And thank you, Martina. That was inspiring, I have to say. Um, I want to join HK now as well. <laughs> good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, and, and I hope you do get something from it. It's, I, I love my job. and. I wouldn't be here without my masters. So fantastic, yeah. really happy. Great. Yep. And you can find all the uh, application details on the University of Adelaide's website. Just go to Degree Finder on our homepage and follow it through from there. Please get in touch. Thank you.